Hi, Code Monkey here. Now, for some time, I'm getting requests about doing my tutorials in Node Package Manager (NPM), and I was resistant at first for a couple of reasons. One, I've been programming a long time, and old habits are hard to break. Second, I didn't feel like it would be taking along a lot of the beginners out there, and I didn't want to leave anybody behind. But it does seem like this is the way that the industry is going. So I will now show you how to set up Phaser using Node Package Manager. So let's get started. Code Monkey, get up, get coffee. Code Monkey, go to job. So I've made an instruction page on how to set up a Phaser 3 template with Node Package Manager, otherwise known as NPM, which a lot of people have been asking for. And you can find that link right under Tutorials, Set Up Phaser 3 Project Template, or I will place it in the comments below and you can get straight to it. And the first thing that you're going to need to do is install the Node Package Manager. And according to the official website, NPM makes it easier for JavaScript developers to share and reuse code and makes it easy to update code that you're sharing so you can build amazing things. In other words, it lets you use a lot of other people's code to save time. Now, it's debatable or not to me whether it makes it easier, but it is becoming the standard, and I find that the advantages of it are starting to outweigh the disadvantages, and I'll talk about that as we go along. The next thing you'll need to do is to install Git, and Git is a free and open source distributed version control system, which pretty much lets you copy files from one place to another, keeps up with different versions of the code as you go along, I won't get too much into Git here, but you'll need it to be able to copy the files from GitHub. So install these two things, npm and git. That'll take a little while to do that. And once you get that set up, go on to step three. Now we need to open a command prompt. And then we're going to make a directory just to keep things organized. And I'll just call it phaser test one. Sometimes I'll organize things into different languages like React, Vue, or Phaser, and sometimes I'll organize it into projects. It's just a place for us to put the code. And then CD, change directory, into that directory. And then we're going to clone the project. And the project I'm talking about is the Phaser 3 project template made by Richard Davey. And the project that I'm talking about is the Phaser 3 project template that we're going to clone off GitHub. And this was put together by Richard Davey, who came up with Phaser. So copy that line there. So git clone, which means we're going to copy or clone the project. And the second parameter here, game one, is the folder that we're going to do it into. So call it whatever you want. So like if it was a space game, for example. And then it's cloning into space game. Now, this will take about 30 seconds or so to unpack everything. There we go. And now we have that directory space game. Go into that directory. And you see we've got some files here. So let's go ahead and open that in our editor. So we've got a couple of things here. The SCR folder, which we're familiar with. An index.js with some phaser code here. A configuration file and a scene object that has a preload and create function. And then we have an assets folder with a logo inside. And then we have something called Webpack. Now this is one of the advantages of Node Package Manager. The reason I switched over was to be able to use Webpack to compile the code into a more basic and compact code. And the advantage of doing that is then I can use it on pretty much any device out there. Right now, the way that we have been doing the tutorials before, I find great for prototyping to making a quick game and experiments and such. But for production, for releasing the game to the public, it would work often on Android phones, but it wouldn't work on a lot of iOS devices. And I want all my games to run on every device out there. And also, compiling it with Webpack makes it run faster and more efficient. Now, I want to talk about one file that is included with every Node Package Manager project. 
and it's the package.json, and it's got a lot of different bits of information in here. Most of the time, you're not going to need to touch this, but if you are redistributing this yourself, you're going to want to change all this information to your own. For example, if you make a great game out of this that you're going to release, then you're going to want to put your own name here. Now, to see the project running, we're not quite ready yet because Node Package Manager depends on what are called Node Modules, the other bits of people's code to make everything run. So to get this to work, we need to bring in those Node Modules. And it's very simple. Command npm install. And then if you look up here in the editor, you're noticing that it's starting to put in some new files. We've got a folder node modules. And I'm going to go ahead and skip the video ahead because this takes about anywhere from three to five minutes to install all the node modules. Now, all our node modules are now installed. And if you look over here in the folder, there are a lot of them. And this is one of the reasons I resisted using Node Package Manager for a long time, because I like to know as much as possible about what's happening with the code. And you see all these folders have been added, and all this code has been added, and it's impossible to keep up with it all. But as I was saying, the advantages of using Node Package Manager overweighed my concerns about this and I've been able to make games very rapidly now and anything that will increase my productivity I'm in favor of. So let's run this program now and we can do that by going npm node package manager start and what this does it opens up a local web server and automatically launches it. So there we have our bouncing logo and everything's set up. And if we make any changes in the files, then the web page will automatically refresh. And later we'll be getting into how to add scenes to Phaser using this Node Package Manager system. I hope you found this useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.